All right, so let's look at um, the code for the Arduino bookcase, the proximity sensing code. Uh, but first, I wanted to show you, you know, what I did for batteries. I think that's pretty important. So I put a switch on the back, and I'll. What happens is those switches. I look, they're not standardized, so it's not like I can build an enclosure for it. Um, I wanted to get one that's that's kind of standardized for it, but really, until I look at Radio Shack maybe to to find a different one, right? That's the one I'm going to use, and I just poked holes. <gasps> so these little packs right here are amazing. Uh, you can get them at SparkFun, and they're lithium-ion batteries. Pretty cool. They recharge pretty easy, but the recharger is pretty expensive. Other than that, really, all you need is about... Mm, these are 7.4 volts. They they last quite a while, but I would say a 9 volt would maybe be better. Okay, So you can just throw a 9 volt battery in there, and it would be good to go. These charge under... You know, like they just charge a few seconds and they're back to normal. A 9 volt takes a little longer to charge. So, there we go. And uh, what's kind of cool is everything fits in this little case in the back. Just like that. And I can put that lid back on. And I'm right handed, so I'm going to switch the robot around. And pick it up because I can't put that on there at that angle. Jeez. Okay, there we go. Sweet. Note to self, don't take the lid all the way off. Perfect. Now, the inside is a hot mess. There's no doubt about it, but it works. You'll see that in the next video. Uh, basically, what I did is I ran that switch to the breadboard, and then I ran... Don't faint. Um, I ran this over to the breadboard as well. So, that plug. So everything is breadboard. There's no circuitry whatsoever in here, except for the Arduino. That's kind of cool to me. I mean, it is a big hot mess, but hey. At least it's a standardized hot mess. Alright, so that should give it enough power now. Oh yeah. Sweet. So in the next part of this video, I'll show you the IR proximity sensing code and how it works while I play around with the robot. Alright, so here's the IR proximity code. You can find this at Thingiverse. Let me show you where. Go to Thingiverse.com, search for 37997 or the Arduino bookcase printable IR proximity sensors and armor mod. So fun to say. Then go down here to the Arduino code scratch pad, click on that, and you'll get this. And down below I have the AI code without sonar. And you'll see in the next video what it really means not to have sonar. I'll try to translate it back here. Um, basically what happens is the robot does not understand space. Uh, y you can't say, hey, there's an object seven inches in front of you. Please back up 12 inches and then try again. I can't do that yet. But this will avoid obstacles that are pretty big within your house. It's still fun to play with. The sonar's coming and you can see it mounted right there. I just haven't wrote that code. I think it would be fun to have two sets of code, one without sonar, just for students that um, basically don't have the money to buy the sonar unit yet. Okay, so this is what it translates down to. Um, let me get the code up and running here. Ooh, multitasking much? Right? Yeah. Let's uh, try this route. 
Who said ADD would not help you in life? That's a made up thing anyway. So here we go. Um, if statements. So there's four if statements that run the entire robot. <laughs> right? That's pretty cool. Uh, I wanted to make it simple yet effective. Turn on the robot so we can listen to the annoying noise that the servos make. And first off, right now there's ones and zeros being broadcast into the thing. Okay? It sees all ones at first until it comes across a zero. And when a zero hits, basically what happens is uh, the, the light bounces off my finger and then says, oh, zero. Okay. So the first if statement basically goes like this. If no zeros are appearing, just go forward. And you'll see that a plus 90 and a negative 90 will make it go forward. And if you're unsure about how to make that happen, uh, make sure you watch the previous videos on how I showed you how to tune the sonar or tune the servos to work like that. Next, if sensor one sees a zero, but sensor two sees a one, this one's still going to go forward, and the other one's going to go backwards. The same with the other if statement. It's just opposite. If this one sees if sonar 1 sees a 1 and sensor 2 sees a 0 start turning. Last but not least, and this I had to trick a little bit because I don't have the sonar yet. If they both see zeros, it needs to back up. Well, what does it mean to back up? How far, right? And what I did is I tricked out the system by I duplicated this three times. That's bad coding, in my opinion. But for right now, it'll it'll work. It's down and dirty, and and it does. It backs up a little bit further. So you have to hold something in front of both of them, and it starts backing up. And that delay right there is very slight but it's good enough to get around most obstacles. If there is something dead in front of this thing, it will take all day trying to decide which way to go, left or right, left or right. But it's important not to manipulate it in any way by putting, let's say, something in here that makes it go right more than left. You want the robot to decide, not the code to decide. And sometimes uh, I see that, you know, like people put in a little bit more right than left, making the robot turn a little bit more right and deciding based upon code. Nah, I don't like that. I like the purest of things. So, that's it. IR proximity sensing code. Um, you know, you'll learn quite a bit from it. I like the fact that, you know, you can Frankenstein this stuff together into other projects. Uh, and it really helps out. So if you're a new student getting into this, never have somebody say robotics is impossible. It's not impossible. It's only been deemed impossible by the people that you hang out with. Not even close to impossible. Start hanging out with, I don't know, a different crowd. You'll be all right. So I hope you enjoy. And until next, um, video where I start integrating the sonar so this is uh, coming later on for right now it's 12 25 12 and Santa's still not here because the kids are still sleeping <laughs> boy uh, they're young so they don't understand yet Santa Claus as much as uh, they will in a couple years but for right now as a parent 12 25 12 646 gotta love that enjoy